We're still on air at the moment, listeners. Oh. Hello again. Right, hello again. Are you back with us? I'm back with us now, sorry about We're up against it tonight, aren't we? It's all... We are. We are, Tony. Grace just yeah. me, mate. Right, it, it's, it's the hostile forces that are around us. Oh, uh, Fighting like mad now, it's... <laughs> hostile forces that are... Where, where was I? Sorry, yeah, where was we're it? We're talking about... Uh, what were we... To, the, the, yeah, um... Yeah, we're talking about the... the, 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 the there is, isn't there? There's some sort of... <laughs> ...festival going on at the moment, isn't there? Ah, yeah, the Festival of Fire, the yeah. but, um, it, it's just strange, me. Have, have you followed the Infowars stuff where you said that? Well, I mean, I've followed the Infowars stuff, individuals attempted to, uh, well, uh, censor me, and I don't get on with uh, Mr. Watson one iota, and what is odd about it is we're on the same side. Yeah. But it but so because but more crucially, you know, I was looking at it today, and they're ranting about this, and they're ranting on about that. And, uh, you know, okay, but there's not even me, you know, there's just, he ain't got a clue what's going on. He hasn't uh, got a clue what happened at, at Boston. I mean, I mean, I, I won't speak hi- highly of him, but I will commend them for the job no, that they do. No, no, no. I, I, I'm always suspicious. Yes. And so, because the most crucial remark that they made in all the in all the stuff that we're coming out with, and I have to say that I do agree with them, is something like this, isn't it? Whereby, um, if it had gone the way of these people being labelled as right-wing extremists, conspiracy theorists, in quotes, yeah. this, that and the other, then you could be treading on the dangerous step of somebody like yourself, John, or even somebody yeah. like me, being classed as some kind of terrorist who's going to blow somewhere up. And that is not the case, and now should it be the case, and democracy... Oh, that's the last thing we're here to yeah, do, isn't it? Uh, democracy, it's exactly the reason yeah. why people like us are speaking up, is because exactly. we're sick of it happening. Yeah. Exactly, and we're the last people... I mean, we're, I just think it's absolutely appalling that a, a young lad like that has got himself into such difficulty and uh, been put to doing this. I know that they say that there was uh, actors there, and it was all staged. Uh, well, and, uh, I think they, these, these two guys who said they've killed one and the other one... Oh, oh, like, I, I'm... A bit fuzzy on the result. I don't know if the one who robbed the store is the one who's dead. Or yes, he is. Yes, the, the, yeah, he is. He, he's, uh, and it, it's, um, you know, I think it's just uh, what what gets me. John, I don't the background in all this, and what what gets me is the fact that you've got 35 agencies in America, uh, security and intelligence, yet still to get through. Got to ask yeah. the question: Are they allowed to get through? Uh, were that the Of course, yeah. Of course, they are. Yeah, um, yeah. We'd be fools to think no. No. I, I mean, um, I, I know that the auntie and the mother have, have spoken out about the boy who's died. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you've got to realise how clever the snake is. Uh, uh, the, 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 no doubt about it, John. The, the snake is extraordinarily clever. Four years ahead. No. No. Hundreds. Years ahead, and once people get that into the head, that yes, we are merely pawns in a yeah. massive, massive, massive game. Uh, I, I'd say uh, that the, the the child of the serpent. I'm still getting slight feedback, mate, in my headphones here. But the I'd say that the child of the serpent is very clever. In fact, it's staggeringly. Uh, you've got to admire the beauty and genius of the system that they've put together, haven't you? Well, they've learned from so many mistakes. How many times yes. have you tried to do this before? I mean, most recently, we had the Nazis, and then mm. know, before that, it was like Alexandria the Great and the mm. Mongolians. And, uh, you, mm. you give everyone's had to go and be learned every mm. time. Mm. I'm so sure. That, like, preempting what, yes. what, what will happen, and they're getting it right. So that's why I remain suspicious about everything, and I, I let instinct dictate. So, 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 what do you think went on at this this horrible incident then over in over in Boston? What, what do you what do you think um, well, happened in terms of in the framework of your experiences? Because what, you see, this is what people get wrong, John. Don't they? they think yeah. that you're some wild conspiracy nut job, and you're not. You've had experiences that create a reference, so that when this information is presented in front of you, you can't look at it in the same way normal people actually may look at it. You well, are most normal people don't even look at it, though. No, no. I mean, most people like will, will do, tie up on shit at, at first mention, you know, because yeah. their belief system gets in the way. Yeah, well, we, uh, I think you've got a valid point on, on that one, but, uh, but from your reference, from your experience, what do you... You know, what do you think? From, from, what? from my experience, if there's a terror attack, blame Mossad. If there's a terror attack, blame the Mossad? Yeah. Blame Israel. And but, why is the Israeli police going over? 
Yeah, I heard that. Uh, were... Elephant in the room, Tony. Yes, I heard massive, that. Massive pink elephant with yellow. It's the, uh, it's the actual, dare I say it, the secret nun there to talk about, isn't it? Because you've got the uh, that guy from the U.S. Army War College who gave that very famous interview about 9/11, talking about the same kind of uh, the same kind of scenario. Although to add a bit of balance to the program, John, it could be argued that the old the Jews did it has been going on since 1800. Uh, you know, the, the, the conspiracy is. Um, been going on around Hitler that, that they were responsible for all this. More, more Zionist than Jew. Yeah, I think I think you've got to define the difference, haven't you, between Zionism yeah, and yeah, completely um, because um, the people who you're referring to these thirteen families, fourteen families, mm-hmm. whatever, like six hundred people or something, they don't class themselves as the same species as us. No. Uh, they don't, and you know, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if cannibalism was actually like a lifestyle choice for them, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, of the stuff that's coming out. I mean, coming out of Germany right now with the, the laws where they want to make paedophilia and bestiality mm. was it sexual preferences? Mm. What planet are these monsters from? Because yeah. that's what they are. Yes, indeed. And if I could just just rewind for the listeners, John, because you you know what you're talking about. To make it understandable for the listeners, you just come out with the families. Just describe the listeners what I know what it's about. But, but, but from your terms of reference, what that's about. The, 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 there is uh, a ruling elite, isn't there? Is what yeah. you're saying. Well, it's a way of keeping it in the family. <laughs> and that's why the, 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 the level of... Um, Incest that goes on, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where, where they're all dating cousins and marrying aunties and stuff like that. I mean, when you think about it, and you know, if you're building something up like a trust scheme, then that's going to be like the best way to really do it because mm-hmm. you keep all the all the power, you mm-hmm. hold the all the money, and you know, it's all inherited now. But the, the, these people then go into schools and get taught completely different knowledge than what normal kids get taught. They get taught how to leech off normal kids it's when they grow up and um, it, it's totally different like their education in school have you learned about that yeah yes i uh, i have learned um, i have learned about it uh, john and there is there is a very dark component going on in our society at the moment uh, and it's present and it's it's not it's not easily seen unless you start looking at the uh, the serpent stuff and the deep occult practices that actually are, are currently going on at the moment, the esoteric. I think what you've got, if we could maybe kind of keep it at a level that, that listeners understand, because I find that if you get if you go too deeply into it, you start creating a mind noise and people switch off. And I don't think that's the kind of thing that people want to do, because people need to hear what's uh, what's what's going on. But I think we have a scenario due to all the UFO intervention that's going on at the moment, where there's, there's always that, I'm sure you'd concur with this, there's that famous scene, isn't there, where uh, Neo in the Matrix confronts, speaks to the machine, yeah. and says, look, we've got something going on in the system here, it's coming to get you, and uh, the system says, why should I believe you? And it, obviously, it, it, it is... That's exactly what's going on at the moment, isn't it? It's this uh, kind of like there's something going on in the system that's happening. It's a ghost in the works. There is a ghost in the works, and it's coming. It's incarnated. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's 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 heading this way from what I'm from what I'm seeing. The the thing is, I think John, in covering these kind of subjects, I think it carries a heaviness with it that I don't want to actually go down uh, because I, I I'd like to just carry on with the if you don't mind, you yeah, can just talk sure. about what the hell you you, you like, but. It, it carries a heaviness with it that that is um, that I think is frankly gives it too much energy, um, and, and I want listeners to be kind of like you know to have a, just a well, light well, time. Well, in listening the good thing about it is, Tony, is we are all in factually incarnations yeah. of what you would refer to as the creator. Yes, because um, if you look at it from an omnipresent point of view, if you're gonna have to witness everything. If you are this omnipresent being who mm-hmm. sees all, hears all, mm-hmm. says all, then you have to split yourself up billions upon trillions of times and individualize yourself so you can get a reference point that you'd never have of yourself from before. And then that's the only way an infinite creator can evolve itself. 
Well, yeah, the, I, I agree with that, but then you've got the separation, haven't you? The fall of man uh, from the Godhead, haven't you? Where does that fit in, do you think, John, in the grand scheme of things? Well, the mad thing with synchronicity is the day that Tony is in. Um, I took my youngest daughter to see the Groots this evening. Uh, for the listeners who have never heard of it, it's, about, it's a CGI, computer-generated, you know, family Disney Pixar mm-hmm. film. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's quite good. It's watchable. Like, you know, I, I, I did enjoy it, but I'm a big kid, so you know. But uh, what I did find really interesting is the Croods is this uh, Neanderthal family. Yeah. Right. So we living in a time, and bear in mind this is a kids' film, and the, the time they're living in is the whole land is given away behind them, and they're having to keep moving. Just so they've had to come out the cave and like escape. Doom that's like chasing them across the hillside, and what actually ends up happening is they encounter a European style male, and he's he's not battle chested, he's not strong because it, the showcase at the start of the film, this family's superhuman power and strength, they're, they're running through the grasslands and like your Serengeti plains speed of a cheetah and the wrestle of mammoths to the ground, the fighting with huge beasts and like you can climb and jump up trees and walls like monkeys. Something I do every day, John, I have to say. <laughs> and um, but while I'm watching it, I'm thinking to myself, you know, that they're basically saying before this European male who's just full of ideas but he's really weak came on the scene. These um ape man styled Neanderthal beings had far superior powers and strength. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it looks like a twelve strand DNA thing and go with the Anunnaki tale about, you know, it was all getting spliced and, you know made made in their image. Well, well, this is it, isn't it? But you see, this brings us actually into your uh, your reptilian experiences. Where I mean, David Icke got shot to bits by uh, Jesse Ventura. I don't know whether you saw that, where yeah. Jesse ro- an- uh, asked all the wrong questions and David gave all the wrong answers because he's a very good investigative journalist. Is David Icke? A lot of people knock him, but his work's pretty good. And um, uh, you know, you can't tell me that during prehistoric times, a, a dinosaur that was uh, highly evolved, you know, highly intelligent, that that consciousness didn't go anywhere because it did and possibly formed uh, what we are suggesting is, is something reptilian in, uh, in nature within our, within our structure, within our, within our framework. And, it says, and I know that you've had these, I was asking about them earlier, that you'd have these experiences with, with reptiles and one or two guys in the US military remote viewing program had had uh, these experiences as well. What are these experiences that you've had with uh, with what people or what society would say is just absolutely far out? Uh, but but well, you know. the, the scariest part, what what I found was the scariest is when I used to work in management and I won't say what company it was for, right? But I got to that level where um, I knew who the highest ranking lodge member was mm-hmm. just by. To, just by talking to them, to, just mm-hmm. by being around them. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening is because I was rubbing shoulders that much, and I am sensitive anyway. People who are around me, like your friends and family, know uh-huh. I, I, I can do extra stuff. Um, what happened is I began to hear the footsteps behind the person who was God. Yes. Sorry, just I just misheard that. You began to hear the footsteps of what, John? Sorry, of whatever it was guarding this lodge member. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So and when I began to key right. into that, I yeah. would see what you could only describe as a velociraptor-esque, yeah. hunched-over, black cloaked, wearing beast. And that's all I could tell you it was. But what happened after that is I ended up losing my job at that company and becoming really, really ill. 
You see, this happened. This is what Nigel Mortimer was saying uh, last week that he, he'd gone to this portal, John, and he'd became really, really ill. I uh, I constantly become mentally exhausted due to the fact of the uh, of the psychic attacks, particularly uh, this week. There was an, a, a very nasty psychic attack on me this week, round about two thirty in the morning. Um, and what we're dealing with, quite simply, and it might be hard for the listeners to understand, but if you look at the, um, at the you know the ancient folklore the research is there and if you also look at some of the uh, remote viewing and espionage stuff that the Russians and Americans did in psychic uh, stuff there's a, there is an alternative hidden consciousness that is in plain sight that is not part of our reality but sits exactly alongside us I'd, I'd argue that it is part of our reality yeah, it, you, yes, sorry, I'd argue uh, yeah, it is space that we perceive yeah. between everything that makes us individuals yeah. is that darkness and um, that's where I've come to understand now, do you know what I was saying, on the ascension scale, I've yeah. got to hear, and it, it gets a bit, whoa, but you, you realise how powerful you are in that case. I, 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 I um, wouldn't entirely agree with you, but what I, do, what I do think is good about what you've just said is the fact that we are cross-referencing between each other, because what you normally get is people who've had these experiences, not listening to each other, coming out with an absolute load of rubbish, but, but in, in, in this case, uh, I find that there are, we can actually cross-reference. I, I do know exactly the reality you're talking about um, i think it came here but but you think it was already here and is part of our nature which is very in, and it's oh, very um, interesting I'd, I'd say that it's part of this reality now yes and it is a problem right uh, but it's like when i was referring to the story and i got really ill yeah i'd i'd claw myself to absolute ribbons get away you know, the man in the photograph doesn't look as if he'd do that kind of thing. Is, it, is that what happened? Because you were being absolutely exposed and chased by something. It, it, it felt like I couldn't control my own hands. That's how it felt, Tony. Right. I, I, won't, I won't dress it up for it. And, and you, you've got to master it. But the second it changed is I, I was ripping my face off in the kitchen and I walked past the mirror. And it was it was in the evening, like it was night time. So the mirror, the windows reflecting my reflection back to me, and I was green and had yellow eyes, big, big, slitted yellow eyes, and it was getting off on what it was doing to me by hold, like controlling my hands, and that when uh, <laughs> it, it shook me up. But when you see it, you see it, and there is no denying it. Yeah, yeah, you you know about it, don't you? Because the thing is, is that part of the the human brain and consciousness, and that probably the quantum and biological um, involvement of this is quite complex. But I, I would suggest what's happened is is that you you are interacting with this kind of reality, aren't you? That we're talking about. It's there and it is present. I know I've seen it. I know what it's about myself. Uh, it's part of the Christ consciousness, though. It's part of it, you think, do you? I think no, it's it separated. Is petrified. Oh, it. right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. What whatever people perceive as yeah. angelic and good yes. in nature, and I don't mean associating it to, to religion or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We come here with guardians. We, with the, we've got animal guides. Our dead protect us. Yeah. Mm. That's why you should respect your ancestors, it's mm. because they're all watching over you right mm. now. Mm. And we are far, far more powerful than mm. anything that we are exposed to. Mm. But it's when you shut off that knowledge mm. that you are left completely exposed mm. on your own in mm. the wilderness. Mm. That is your own mind. Indicating there, John, is a very um, is a very ancient understanding of uh, metaphysics and the esoteric that is buried, absolutely buried from mankind's um, what's the word we look perception, consciousness, understanding. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? But it, 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 it that is what it's about. You want mate, say again? This, this should be taught to, to school children. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it certainly should, but instead what we've got is the, um, you know, we've got it going on, going down with the lodge, haven't we? You know what I'm saying? The lodge, they're in the property development company, they're in that they, uh, they don't know what they're doing. They, 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 we've got all this symbol, I mean, the pop industry as well, John, I'm sure you'd agree. We've got a cult symbol in the pop industry where they're all giving it the, uh, you know, giving it the eye symbol and this symbol and that symbol. Yeah, and, 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 
I would describe you as a psychic warrior. Uh, you know, and I know what that is all about, and it's not very pleasant. I can't even watch the TV. I haven't no. been able to watch the TV. Really? Years, yeah. yeah. I can't even be in the same room as when it's on. Um, I'm, I'm okay if it's, like, a, a, a movie. Mm. But anything that's got, like, advertising coming in halfway through, or, or that weird, the high-pitched whine that you put on the main, sh- on the, the main channels, have you heard that? No, no, I haven't heard that. Well, I, I know these, these new tellies doing all yeah. the cross factual projection stuff. Yeah. They're getting hit with subliminals that come in from diagonal angles. I've seen a kind of coke pop up halfway through one program, and I was just like, "Oh, what can you see?" That? And like, dude, the missus can't see anything. I- indeed. So, and I think the goldfish bowl, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, well, this is it, isn't it? And people aren't aware of this this reality uh, around us. If you look, for example, at Rihanna's, um, what's the video, John? Is it Umbrella? Where's your body is painted in silver. Is she? Yeah. Now, now, people who haven't understood the esoteric or occult wouldn't wouldn't would just miss that completely. But even 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 probably the people who are the artists wouldn't even realise, perhaps, what was, what was going on. But I'd urge listeners to have a look at the symbolism in uh, in pop videos, what John's talking about from the... And there's a very good site on it called uh, Vigilant Citizen, uh, uh, who who does all this symbolism about what is, uh, what is going on and the esoteric and the hidden realities uh, around us. It's something that we must defend against at every level. Uh, even It even affects the man in the street, does all this. It certainly does. But I, I tell you what is interesting, John, if you don't mind me asking you, just moving on slightly, is the the thing to do with the, um, we've talked about the consciousness, we've talked a bit about the reptile stuff, which everybody gets wrong, you've really got to know your stuff around that, um, and the consciousness that's happened to you, but this, but what is interesting is abduction from off-world entities. Yeah. Uh, uh, where does that all then mesh in with, with your experience? I've never told you this, Tony, and I've spoken to you a few times, but I've never told you this yet. Hmm. When I was 19, talking, talking, 98, talking, yeah, I was studying graphic design advertising in High Wesson in Buckinghamshire, yeah, and I used to have a, a, a tiny one bedroom bed sit above the Finn McCurls bar, yeah. Mm-hmm. This one, I was taking the telly off, very uneventful, I was on my own, everything's off, lights off, doors locked roll over and I go to sleep. Mm-hmm. The next morning I awoke around about two thirty in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. The wrong way round on the bed, so top to tail, yeah? But make me head hanging off the end of the bed. Good God. Shorts on back to front. Yeah. And I had had a massive hemorrhage <gasps> in, in my nose, from my nose to my chin, like in a triangle, and it went no further than my chin. And the sash window, in the, the, a big, big sash window in the bedroom was wide open. But when I woke up, I woke up with, <gasps> like, like I haven't pre- breathed for a yeah. good while, yeah? <laughs> and wh- when I got up and that, and I just crumbled my face and like what I just did not know what that was and I'm looking at the window and my instincts go and you, you've been out the window you know where you've been you know where you've been and I'm, but I was like 19 years old so I was chocker yeah couldn't I didn't want to believe it so then I went into the bathroom and, and like just start like looked in the mirror and I was what's that on my face because there was no pain as such but when I washed like this crust crusted substance off my face, it was all, it was blood, and it was thick, I must have been, the blood must have been pouring out of my nose, wherever this nosebleed happened, so I'm trying to like, console myself, and convince myself, he just had a nosebleed, and he must have opened the window in the night, or something like that, and but my, my instincts put me head, but that wouldn't be the case, and then my actual conscious mind went, well find blood in that room, I walked back into the bedroom and I spent at least 20 minutes inspecting bed sheets and pillowcases, everything, the blood. There was not a speck of blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the the the, the reality that you've been exposed to is as real as uh, as this reality, isn't it? Yeah, I I know I've been checked mm. because I used to work outside a lot as well in mm. like in my twenties growing up and uh, mm. and uh, I've. Charlie's around like the Tesco's car park and just get the impulse to look 
up and I'd see a, a cigar shaped object fly out of a cloud, head up towards the ground and then you turn straight back into another cloud or spheres following contrails of jets mm. and, and, and I've been able to have the privilege of sitting there with a sceptic going, I don't believe a single way to say saying, John, and then like a, a classic St. Elmo's ball of fire has appeared in the night sky and I've gone, well, what's that? Mm. And let them try and debunk it themselves, because mm. when they see it, no, it's not a helicopter, it's not a plane, it's not a plane, and then it just goes, zoop, and it's mm. three miles away in the distance, you're like, do you see what I mean now? Mm. I've, I, I have literally ripped people's heads wide open whilst they're being just sat, sat with a skeptic, so it's funny sometimes. I hope when you mean rip people's heads open, I hope you meant intellectual. The mind, yeah. The mind, yeah, <laughs> With their mind wide open. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and it is no. Um, there's a lot of people out there who have uh, who have gone through this. Now, the, the man in the street may ask, "What the hell are we talking about? This is all a bit far out." But if you put, applied a bit of chaos theory to it, whereby you know a, a butterfly flaps six wings in a jungle and causes absolute you know mayhem with the weather system, uh, you could see these examples in our society. You could see it, for example, the little the little flap of the wings in, for example, a certain certain company that has a GPS band on its staff to make them work oh, yes. and quicker. Yeah. Uh, the other company that has also in its warehouse staff wandering about with a little thing on it, with a little gadget that makes them work quicker. Nothing to worry about. Absolutely, it's productivity, that yeah, job. Yeah, the Tesco's, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Tesco's, nothing it's to worry draconian. about. Draconian. Yeah, it's, it's, Draconian. And, uh, you know, and, and I know my... Yeah, I see it's only, I'm sorry to interrupt, oh, yeah. is, um, you know, we, we can make robots that can do everything for us, yeah? They, they've been able to make energy out of thin air since Tesla was about. The yep. school kids doing it across the world, you're making renewable fuel, curing cancer, that they're, they're doing it. Is what we have is a leech in yep. place, and we've just got to burn the leech off. And yep. you know, I, I think a massive round of hugs might do it. But, well, you know, uh, you know may seem, uh, John. I, I, you know, I think I think that's quite correct, and you see it also, don't you, in the in the little bits of haircut where people's wealth is being confiscated. We're led to believe that that's due to a problem in quote marks with finance, uh, when in fact it's all fiat currency, and it actually is, is some sort of very bizarre game that's uh, that's going on. But what you're seeing, if you're the man in the street, is you're seeing this little these little things going on that don't appear connected you know I, I don't know they can be so naive now Tony it's so blatantly obvious in your face I mean it's even like when you, you want to you talk real to the man in the street alright mm. what man in the street fills a full wheelie bin a green wheelie bin full of grass or, mm. or twigs mm. every other week mm. no one mm. does it but they send the bin men out to collect this, these empty green bins that no one leaves out because no, <laughs> it, it takes a year to fill the things. Hmm. And yet no one says anything. We, we all bend over and bury our heads in the sand and say, yeah, yeah, we put our black bin out when you say you're going to pick a fucking out. Okay, yeah, we'll do what we're told. No, no that's that exactly when what is happening and the disability uh, you know the disability living allowances yeah. and the uh, and everything to do with the with the welfare state which is subtly being eroded is quite intentional it's it's it, and it's esoterically driven and not a lot of people realize this but there's an esoteric engine behind it it's not just done for the hell of it but people don't see that what they what they see is in the events that are not connected little dots everywhere because you have rightly said the serpent does not work no, the, 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 the system does no. not work. This, no. this society is no. uh, is ma malfunctioned so yes. many times, yes. and it just needs to be abolished. Yes, we, and, and we go back to the base roots, and the, like, you know, but, but, but the, the the powers that were that don't like that, that they want to be in control. They they want us not enjoying ourselves because there is something parasitic <laughs> leeching off the energy that we give out. So it's not just down to our, our hard sweat and tears that we're, we're working all the time and then yet come home and sit in front of the idiot box until it's time to go to bed and then do it again tomorrow ad infinitum. Mm. It's, um, you know, we should be living life. Mm. 
Mm. Yes, well, we, we, well, we certainly should, and we should be remembering uh, what it is to be in the presence of the supreme, you know, God, Godhead within our minds, which well, has yeah, been just yeah. battered and battered and battered. But, and, and just, just looking, you know, just, just thinking about it, John, as well. What springs to mind is within all this, you've had kind of like, into, which isn't surprising, because I know, I know the territory you've been in, uh, and you've had aliens and uh, alien and UFO experience as well. Just to, just to, you know, I think you're doing a very good job in keeping it at a level that people can understand because if we went we went a bit deeper people would would just go oh my god and i think you you know i think you're doing a super job just keeping it level so that people can can find out more if they if they're not into this sort of thing but the aliens can you tell us about your alien and ufo experiences and give us a right good uh, you know a right good spiel on it about what went on well um yeah. from the night where i said i woke up the next day yes, i didn't right. have any concrete recollection of anything from that point. and if I was to disclose what I think really happened then I'd be merely going through what I've sat there and tried to bring back through meditation yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um, it, it's whether you want to go into that field because I've not been regressed I had a very real experience and I knew something had happened, but I, I believe that because I do have a very, very vivid imagination, mm -hmm. is that my own um, creativity could have come into play. Uh, what I will say is um, that the things that got me, it looked like they were merely interested in genetics. They are, yeah. 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 Well, uh, well, I'll go. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it, mate. Go on. I'll go for it. Right. Go for it, mate. Yeah, Can we give you a round of applause, John? Hang on. Before you go for it, sorry, I've cut you on a quick round of applause. <laughs> Marvelous. Go on. <laughs> right. right. Uh, I'll describe the different types of UFO I've seen. I've seen your cigar shaped objects. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a long, 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 and I, I must admit, I must have only been seen side on, but it just looked like if you held a black meter rule at arm's length and it was about three miles away so I don't know what that was mm -hmm. and I've seen spears your typical St. Elmo's fire mm. and I've, one of the most interesting ones is I walked one day in one of the old houses I, I walked straight out of the back garden with a cigarette and looked up in the sky and mm. at that second in between some cumulonimbus clouds a crescent with like a tear, blue, a silver crescent, with like the wings facing backwards, so the points of the wings facing backwards, yeah, mm -hmm. from the direction this was going, mm -hmm. and it had like a teardrop with the point also facing the same way as the points of the crescent, mm -hmm. and this was like the size of my thumb mm -hmm. above my head, and it went past the clouds from above, and that was like you know, where I said I get the impulse to look up and then see it. Mm -hmm. And um, that that's like a roundup of the the main ships that I've seen. The Silver Spears and the Elmo's Fire, they're, they're the, the most common ones. You know, like when you see like, them coming across the sky and they look just like a star as well, but then they just do this mad right angle and go off somewhere else into like deep space. <laughs> the thoughts, the, the memories that I've tapped into when I got on it, what I could get from it was... There was a light in the bedroom, and the window opened, and I sat up on the bed, and this blue incandescent light sucked me out the room. As I was going up this beam, which seemed re it seemed really slow, but a police car in the street drove past, and I was thinking, you must be able to see this, Joe, from the memory. But then th th that seemed like the time had slowed right down and the police car was hardly moving. And then the next thing, I'm in this darkened room with an oval screen in front of me and there's what I've come to understand is, is a mantid or a mantis, where, wherever you're from. But this just looked like a, like a wasp, praying mantis grey. Um, well, like your insect grey, gunmetal grey yeah. head. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of a lot of people report them. Go on, mate. Black yeah. cloak, black yeah. cloak, and I couldn't tell you the size because I don't know whether I was stood up or I was sit down. Mm -hmm. 
But it had this oval screen, big oval screen in front of me, and I remember them showing like walls of water coming in and like explosions and stuff. And I was just completely unfazed because when I when I look back at look back out at it, my my later childhood, I was completely desensitized to gore and violence and all the stuff that they put in movies. Yeah. Sorry, just just stop that you said just missed that though. You're saying when you were a child, you were desensitized. Yeah, and as I was growing up, I used to watch Terminator and everything, so I was totally desensitised to right. just seeing pictures on the screen. That was right. Sort of I had a pretty horrendous screen. upbringing then. Was your upbringing quite, quite violent or quite... Yeah, no, very, very loving parents. Very you? loving parents. It was just I had a very weird growing up where what, I knew I could do this extra stuff. Like, I mean, it's like where, where I grew up, it was, um, if you went went out to play, you were taking your life in your hands, you know? Yeah, So you I know learned it. to be very streetwise, but yeah. when when you're seeing a, a, yourself from behind 20 feet away, quickly getting bigger with speed, mm. and then you turn around to knock someone out and you, you're only a kid, mm. it, it Go, makes you think, well, hang on, that was just straight up spider sense, that's what that was. Mm. And that's, um, that I still get that to the day where I can see through someone else's eyes, and they always find it's when, um, it hasn't happened for a while now, but it's when emotion, an emotion that you need to know about, mm -hmm. is put on that eye track, yeah? It's like, um, I mean, if you're taught amb ambush techniques in the military, you're taught not to look at your target, because mm -hmm. they will sense you looking at them. Mm -hmm. is, that, is, is, it, is that right? So, uh, and is this, is yeah. this a form of um, the, the, the eye thing, what you're talking about? Is that, what, the, what is that actually like? Is it like, for example, the experiments the French did in 1900, where they, uh, they got somebody to do uh, close their eyes and read from a paper? It's nothing like that, is it? What you're describing is... I, have, I haven't looked into that stuff. I, I have had people, me, not even me, who, who've done it while I've been there and have made sure they can't cheat and do pre guess the shape and stuff like mm. that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, have, I have had my kids do it back to me. Mm. It, what, one of my daughters is very psychic. Mm -hmm. Very psychic. Like, you can feel it in your head rooting around. Yeah. That's how psychic she is. And I, yeah, I've actually turned around to her and asked her to get out of my head, and she's just laughed at me and then run away. Is you know, that so, right? Yeah, so Gracious she knows, me. She does it. I think probably when I was your daughter's age, my father, who was potently psychic, used to give me headaches and chuck yeah. me on the bed. I couldn't move, uh, and if I was naughty, he'd just give me a headache. So it's quite obvious, isn't it, that, that the family background and all that kind of thing is, is crucial in the interaction of this, um, of this reality, what is, uh, what is around us. Absolutely, uh, absolutely crucial. Uh, what, what, the, the thing to do with the rabbit hole, then, uh, John, does that relate to the um, does that relate to the, the Matrix, then? Because I know you talk about subjects in in public called the rabbit hole and fifth dimensional stuff. I like to have a look at that and Hollow Earth, uh, definitely Hollow Earth, which is uh, you love the Hollow Earth. The mad thing about the Hollow Earth, Tony, is the reason why some of these UFOs are massive, especially the turtle shell ones. Do you yeah, look, yeah, is because they actually originate from within our planet. Yes, and they do. what we're actually talking about is an ancient base of giant humans oh. who, who are the ancient gods, like the gods of Ultima Thul, y y Thor, Loki, uh, all these giant, uh, oh god, you Goliath. The list of giants goes on and on and on through like a uh, history of you've spoken word and led myth and legend. It's like, oh, what's his name? Gilgamesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see the statues of this Gilgamesh. He had to be about 16 feet tall because what's in his arm is a tiger. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So yes. We're, we're talking this great leader who just stroll into battle with a bag full of tigers and just throw them at the... <laughs> Well, look, there's that famous image, uh, isn't there, an Irish... Is it Liverpool-Lime Street train station of that giant in the coffin that mysteriously went missing, uh, John? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is, that, is that kind of the thing we're talking about? These giants are everywhere. They get getting removed from museums. You've got the giants of Ecuador, as we're talking about, and above seven, seven feet. It's like the pyramids in China. Yeah. Uh, and they've dug these seven-foot mummies out and all that. Well, the, the, the reason why all no one knew new China had pyramids is because when Eisenhower sent the satellites up, yeah. the Chinese were like, we, we can't let the Western race discover that 
the culture and history that China is built upon is actually made by legend, in the legend, by tall, white, Aryan Europeans. Well, I you learn something every day, John, and I thought I knew some stuff, but I didn't know that one. And is that right? right? You'd love me hollow earth, earth talk, yeah. Gracious yeah. me. So, no, tell us more. So, because I know that, um, that you know, that the, the history is there of, of ancient aliens and all that kind of thing. And I know that China did, I've forgotten the name of a publication that they did to do with um, chemistry, wasn't it? Science, knowledge, arts, a special book that they wrote. Um, revolutionized thinking, didn't it? Oh, yeah. In 1600. But, but going back, this is absolutely fascinating. So can you explain more about it then, about China and the uh, and its ancient history with giant aliens? I don't know anything about this. Right. Well, do you, um, you mentioned off there that I have memories from past lives. Yeah, you did, mate. Yeah. yeah. On regression, on personal regression myself, I found that this was, and this just fell in my head and at least one other person's head at the same time, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, who's a friend. And um, what happened is I was taken back to the to America, yeah, mm -hmm. I was somewhere on the plains in America, I was, mm -hmm. in, I was a, a witch doctor, and me and three friends, because we knew what was going to happen with the English coming over, mm -hmm. we knew that our knowledge would be raped the land would be raped and we, we knew we were going to lose everything. So we made this spell involving these thistles where it wouldn't matter when we reincarnate, where we reincarnate, who we reincarnate as, mm -hmm. the knowledge would seek us down and find us again. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to look for it. We made this agreement with, with ourselves that it we were openly wanted the knowledge back. Mm -hmm. um, one of the d the deepest, as in time, when I go back, I go back to the time before the Great Cataclysm. Yeah, I'm fascinated. I, go, on. I'm, I'm sorry and, because I'm just fascinated. You're gone. And because this is such a, a old, old memory, is that I remember a great war between us and what you could only class as a dragon race. Yeah? Right. So you're talking like humanoid reptilians, uh, quadruped, winged, giant ones and stuff, and we had giant Aryan godmen on our side, your Hercules. Yeah? That, that's what we're looking at, is we had these guys on our side, and what we actually did was be fought them into the crevices of the air. So right now in on a, on the subterranean outer crust of this planet, which I refer to as Terra T E Double -R, R A. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not called Earth, it never was. Um well what you actually have is these nests of subterranean uh, reptilian mm -hmm. races. Mm -hmm with the us sat on the outer surface, mm. completely oblivious to it, mm. whilst inside, in, in the hollow core, mm. we, we have our, we like to say, our, our protectors, the guardians of, of Gaia, the protectors of this Earth, because if you look at it from a point of view where you can sit inside the planet and guard two entrances and, eg and exits, mm. then you, you've got an ultimate... Um, which is why the Nazis sorted down. Yes, the, the, now the Nazis went up to Antarctica, didn't they, at the end of... Uh, down to Antarctica, yeah. yeah uh, where does that, in the grand scheme of things then, where does that mesh in, where does that relate Antarctica into into all this? Is it, that, that is part of the hollow earth, isn't it? They found, they, yeah. they certainly found stuff there, didn't they? Yeah, the, the way the, the earth, the way gravity works is, uh, even Isaac Newton, the, the guy who uh, discovered gravity, if you want to describe it that way, he was a, a proponent of the hollow earth theory, right. and it's since been tested since then, where they do a plumb line test to test where the core should be. <laughs> and if gravity was centered in the core, then all these plumb lines would, would like register as you're lining up through a cross-reference of the center of the planet. <laughs> You don't. You, 
be irrelevant to the gravity in the crust. So what a planet is, is a massive gyroscope with an outer crust and outer plate tectonics grinding against an inner counter set of plate tectonics, which is why it's all going to be molten rock, because it's grinding against, the, it's rock grinding against itself, yeah? Mm -hmm. And these are spinning into in a, a gyroscopic motion. Mm -hmm. And the iron crystal core, so it's, it's not like a little sun or anything like that, it's crystal, it's iron crystal, yeah? Mm. It's not liquid metal or anything, it, 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 this, it, even the science points out that, you know, that's what it would obviously be, is crystal. Yeah. This um, sort of gyrates around its own little circular motion inside the planet, and that's why when you get the hyperborealis and the hyperostralis, the northern and southern lights, <laughs> It's why they come out at both ends at like a, co a corresponding angle, as if there is an inner sun spinning round. And yeah, the Nazis knew. The Nazis, the German, the Germanic gods of ultimate fool, and the Brill Society, they were welling into it. And at the end of the war, they, they set up this, uh, they told like everyone that you know, hit, say, Hitler shot himself in his bunker. I didn't though, did they? After you boat yeah, fleet went up there, didn't they? Yeah, mm. we all went to Antarctica. They did, didn't And then when Admiral Baird followed them down there in Operation yes. High Jump, yes. he actually went inside and got talked to the master. I mean, the, the news report that from Admiral Baird when he got back is very interesting. I can't, I'm not going to quote because I haven't got it written in front of me, but the gist of it was, was um, we landed at McMurdo Sound and proceeded. 200 kilometers towards the South Pole. We then penetrated a further extent of land, another 2,562 approx kilometers before rendezvousing with the master and returning back. Yeah. Mm. The key word penetrated. Mm. And an extra two, two and a half thousand miles, well, he would have ended up in, like, you know, South Africa or Australia or, you know, mm. off the coast of South India. Mm. So, it, they, they went in and they done it and the, the, the giveaway part, what it, I mean, you can look on YouTube, it's like the secret land into YouTube and it's actually got the, the first part of the expedition to them going. Yes, it so, has. So, they went. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm and very familiar. No denying it. And then they went back. Yes. It, several years later, I think ten years later, without Admiral Baird, I think. Yeah, I'm sure it was without him, because uh, the, one of his mates was killed, and the other, uh, and Admiral had to spend several years in hospital, if I remember correctly. But um, like the next mission was Operation Deep Freeze, and the Allied forces got near enough. Right. Oh, Deep Freeze. That's one I'm not. Uh, I'm not familiar with. I'm familiar with something called Operation Tabalan, which I'll explain to your listeners later. But I'm not familiar with um, Deep Freeze. Tell us more on that one, John. I'm not familiar with that. Well, deep Freeze is they took another armada back to the South Pole. But wow. The Nazis had established themselves by then. It's believed and yeah. came up with a. Uh, Zero G technology and highly advanced weapons, and wiped out yes. most most of the fleet yes. before they called them a massive uh, retreat. Yeah, cut cut the stay half short or something. I believe once we came back, like with. The, the, and the thing is, within all this, there, were, there was the British Operation Tabalan, which went to Antarctica before the Americans actually did to discover the polar men. They'd actually, uh, the, it was an SPS team that, that went in uh, because they, they, well, quite simply because a base, or a British base, had been wiped out by them. Uh, and when they got there, according to this eyewitness who'd be, who hadn't changed his story over four years, he was a special boat squadron guy, when they got in there, they discovered these polar men were indeed uh, some sort of giant developed kind of being within the, within the uh, you know within the thing. But it is uh, John, isn't it? It's it's known to I think it is known to government that part of the UFO components, not all of it, but part of it is is connected with that to this yeah, day. I'd argue yeah. we're not actually de dealing with extraterrestrials in origin. I'd, I'd say we are sharing this world and the, and the solar system beyond 
we're very um, advanced people who know exactly what to do. And I remember when I first started going through this, and one of my mates said to me, he went, John, you, you're, full of, you're full of the proverbial. Um, you know, if there was aliens here, yeah, everyone would see it, and there'd be nothing you can do about it. And I said, uh, so if you were that intelligent, you wouldn't even know. No, you wouldn't. And that, that's when he, he, it dawned on him, yeah. the actual severity of what the situation could be. Do you know, you know as well as I do, John, with your experiences, and listeners might find this funny, but you could be walking in your local supermarket and something will kick off. <laughs> and, and you know it, I know it, because I've been through it, uh, but the people around you are none the wiser, and you don't say a word, but it's part of the cosmic ordering, isn't it? Part of the universal well, mind, no, I <laughs> guess. Yeah, what you're saying about you know, walking around the supermarket, it reminds me of when I was in, um, I, I was walking through Liverpool City Centre, I think it was just after Christmas, this was, and there was, it wasn't busy, it was a weekday, and as we were walking through uh, one of the indoor bits, there was this guy came around the corner, and he stopped, had a chat with something in front of him that was half his height and invisible to my eyes, shook mm-hmm. his hand, and then bid it good day and walked on. Mm. And, I, and I was like, we, um, for, for someone to, I mean, we, we'd look at it and say, you're completely insane. He'd look at us and say, you can't see them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, abso- abso- absolutely. Uh, that, that, that is very true. And, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it is, this reality is around us. Uh, and, and some of us, it is, it is like something out of the Matrix, isn't it? Where, you are seeing something, it's a, and that film They Live, I'm sure you've seen that, haven't you? Oh, Where Rowdy it's... Roddy Piper. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I and came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. Yeah, exactly, oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it's an amazing example, isn't it, of how, uh, of how the reality around us isn't quite, isn't quite as, it, as it appears to be. Um, no, it's, you not, know. It's, it's not at all. No, it's not. It, it's certainly, and you don't need drugs either, John. You no, don't need no. drugs to, um, to, because some people take drugs, don't they, to, um, to kind of like experience these realities, but for some of us, like, it's the, like ayahuasca and yeah. magic mushrooms. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. yeah, and, and the thing is with it, is they're just crap, they just don't, they're, for people like us, they just, they just don't make a scrap of difference because we are tuned into something that, that others aren't, and uh, sometimes I think it's a curse. Do you think it's a curse, or do you think it's a gift, or uh, did no, you wish- I have thought it was, um, uh, a bit unnecessary to some of the levels it was going to, yeah. Mm. I did, uh, it, but it's that's when you're learning. You got to remember what your goal is on the other side of fear. Mm. So it's gonna push you. It's mm. gonna push you. It's gonna. But, but it depends what you listen to. And one one that's good for your listeners. I, I absolutely love this when I I came across it. Have you heard of um, Bob Proctor? Uh, go on, remind me. Uh, he done. He had a cameo on the video of The Secret, and he was in the book for The Secret, but he's done a lot of his own work, this yeah. Bob Proctor guy. And uh, he... Oh, God. To remember rightly, if you type in Bob Proctor, mm-hmm. uh, how to get rich or something, but it's how to think and get rich. I'm sure that's what it's called, but mm-hmm. you're looking at a nine-hour seminar, which he, which he doubles up with, with um, this other guy, it's called John, can't remember his surname, but, but the pair of them are brilliant. And they actually show you how your mind works. And no, uh, and before I'd watched this video, I mean, I only watched it last year, and I thought I'd, I you know, I was pretty like level-headed and clued up. But until I saw this video, which I think it was from the early 90s, it, it blew me away because it shows you the system for your, your mind and your subconscious mind and how that works, you know, so if in your subconscious mind you're this, you're, you, you're really loving, you're really nice, and you, you're, you're the perfect person you want to be, then that uh, ekes out into reality. Amazing, absolutely, yeah, right, okay. Uh, but the, the thing is though, uh, John, I suppose if you, if you are an unstable vehicle, uh, and you, you're having all these psychic attacks and experiences, how do, how do you um, reach that level of mastery so you're not going absolutely bonkers with it and that behaviour of chaos becomes normal behaviour within the framework of the mind? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So how you don't get like 
to have carried away with it. Yes, or, exactly. Or because um, because the, this dark force that we're talking about will, if you're yeah, not careful, send you bonkers. We won't choose it? the menu, Tony. Mm -hmm. We choose the menu. Mm. Yeah. But it, so, but if you're going psycho with it, how would you know what menu well, you're choosing? This, this is where the this is the twist. If if it comes out with a worry, a notion, or a fear, guys, you got to remember the 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 darkness that we are talking about is the ego. Very interesting, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's where I've come to my understanding is that negativity is even in our heads. Yeah. And it's that little voice that says you can't, you 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 got to do this, or you got to do, oh, you can't do this, you can't do it. It's the one that knocks you down every time you're up, yeah. Yes. And when you learn to go, ah, shut up, and t just tell it to shut up. You, you, you don't, I don't mean like do you sound like a schizophrenic and be, do you shouting out, shut up in the middle of the street and that. Mm. Don't give it any energy. Mm. And then when something comes along that makes you feel good, give mm. that the energy. Mm. and devote your energy to the stuff that, that makes you happy. So what happens is you, you end up starving this parasite that's feeding off your emotions, and you're saying, no, nah, I'm, I'm not eating that no more. I, I like thinking these thoughts, and then I like it when I achieve my goals, and I, I like it when, when I, I feel happy about myself, and, that, and then it'll go, okay, man, change the menu. But the easiest and most nutritious menu for these things to feed off is fear and worry because it, it's so easy. It, it, it is, and it's a form of biological. Uh, it's a form of biology that is that is kind of like off the radar with us as human beings, isn't it? It's yeah. the form of nature and biology that you know that, that that really is off the off the radar. And speaking of biology, I mean, you've also. When it comes to animals as well, you've also got a, a fascinating thing going on there with your paranormal experiences. Yeah, you, you just, it, it's, um, people call it you connect, do, or tune in. Yeah. And, that, and that's what they say. I mean, I've heard, I've heard some animal psychics who've come out with the blatant obvious and that, and you think, yo, come on, come on you know, give us something better. Like, get, get the dog to tell us what, what he does when no one else is in the house, or... <laughs> What, what colour underwear she got on and that, you know, you know so, you know, give, give us something that we can actually go, yeah, yeah. So, so have you got a dog then, John? Yeah, we, we've got a, a family pet, yeah. But uh, my, what, my thing is, do, before we got her, is, do we, I, I say, get a bit of clear, clear voice coming through. I, I was told, you need to take care of this, because we were, um, we were family millennia ago. But like this is an old soul that has come back again. Yeah. And that that's I mean I look into it and it's like looking into the eyes of one of my daughters. I call her my third daughter, so well, my fourth daughter, sorry. Yeah. But yeah. Um it, it, is, is there like any any tele sorry, is there like any telepathy goes goes on between you? Do you hear it's in a voice or do you hear do you, I mean do you hear it's um yeah, do you hear it's in a voice, that kind of thing? You've got to remember it's never been taught English. Yeah, but when you listen to animals, and I, I, the easiest is with with birds, wild birds. Yeah, uh -huh. if you got to remember language, the way language is built up, it's built up in syllables. Yeah, yeah. Or there's this emotion that is piggyback. Yeah? Right. Okay. Got you. Carry on. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's like you could say the same thing to someone. This is why so many people get in trouble on social networking sites, is because they say something that's just being a bit sarcastic or being funny. Like, uh, but someone actually takes the offence, takes the knock over it, and they're mm -hmm. like, Rrr. but no, I, d I didn't mean it like that. And when it's took out of context, that's why this digital world is such a nightmare for a species like ours, is because so much is lost in translation. But when, if like, if you, your listeners and yourself do it now, it's like the summer's coming along, so you've got lots of opportunities to just sit in nature. Yeah. Um, and tune in to, if you were this tiny little sparrow or pigeon or what, well, it, it, it's the smaller bird's got the highest chirp, chirp, so it's easier to jump in on that because that's the most similar to what, how we talk now, yeah? Mm -hmm. And... Put yourself in the bird's shoes mm -hmm. and then realise you know, what would be the topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to recognise a, a language form in it. 
and this got to such a point with me that uh, if this this totally floored me as I used to feed the birds all the time when we first moved into this house yeah mm-hmm. so I just got like bits of bread up on on the roof and this one winter I, like the first winter we were in there I, I'd feed them almost every day and I'd mean like it would, the leftovers and the proper like would have got back off me the next summer I was sat out in the back and uh, uh, at least 500 of these starlings or finches or sparrows or whatever they were landed on my roof and one of them looked me bang in the eye and said thank you for all the food you gave us you kept us alive but, and that was like it shouted it in cheap and like do a chair and I had to run in the house yeah yeah and you see see what happens with this is that people who would hear that would think John's off his rocker but you see the thing with it is this is that um, you must um, the people must understand that there is a biological and and profound unconscious reality that flows through us that is off radar it, and, and what is interesting further to note, John, with this idea of the bird, is that William Henry, who is a researcher I um, I just find absolutely fascinating, we're going to have him on the show, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a word, you know, according to his research, there was a word which was expressed as the nature of things. Like Tarzan? Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. It was- <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and, and it was it was spoken in the Garden of Eden, uh, but King yeah. said that King Solomon recovered it, um, you know, and he used it with wisdom. So, so the so the legend goes, Ooh, and, it was, yeah. uh, and also Jules Verne used it and preserved its secrets, uh, and it is said, so did Jesus, according to the research of, uh, of William Henry. And I what recommend you're talking it. about the the same where there's toast and yeah, the thoth or. Now then, that's in, no, no, I don't think, because, yeah, fourth, that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's more, that's more Egyptian, isn't it? That's more the ancient, um, yeah, that's, no, I'm not too sure on that one, because I've been wanting to get hold of this book, and in fact, I must make an effort to have a read of it, because it, it's all about this, um, that before there was the word, there was the word of the birds, um, which was spoken in the Garden of Eden, uh, and was lost and then recovered. And, and I, what I find fascinating about you, John, is the fact that you've come out, come out with research that already exists about it without you even knowing based on your own experiences. Yeah. Which That's is, what I always found, Tony, is yeah. in, you have said the knowledge would find me, yes. is I'd sit there and go, I'd just, wonder, I'd just sit there and wonder and wonder and wonder. You know, I'd, I'd mm. be a daydreamer, like, but as I said, I'm very vivid anyway, mm. the imagination. But then I'd go, no, I reckon this is what the score is, because I'd sit there working it out. Mm. And then when I go and look, like, in books and online and mm. ev- everywhere else in libraries and stuff, mm. I'd find it. And I'd be just like, well, you know, there you go. What, what the hell does a man like you work um, see then in the films like The Da Vinci Code? Ha <laughs> ha, as we leave. I haven't through. watched it. I you haven't watched, watched it. it. No, no um, you haven't seen The Da Vinci Code, because I know it's a passion of yours, isn't it? And you were telling me all yeah. about it in emails, uh, well, about the fact that... What, what, what it is, is, where The Da Vinci comes in is, I knew that when I concentrated on my artwork, it was of a lesser quality than when I didn't concentrate. Mm-hmm. So when I switched off and just let it happen... The, the quality of work is far, far superior than, and I can show you the difference um, off, off air later on. But um, you know, you can see that there's a stark contrast, in, not only in style but in in quality, in, in artistic flair. So I I'd meditate and I asked myself, what where does this gift come from? Because I've always had it since since a toddler, mm. I've always been able to draw, and the instinct of uh, nudge I like to refer to it as because it's not like I I hear it as words, but I don't I don't hear it like someone's next to me talking. It's like like a, a, a quiet subconscious mind mm. comes forward and just went let 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 me draw who it is. So I switched off and didn't even look at the piece of paper I was drawing on and within about 10 seconds I'd, do, I'd done an um, isometric profile of Da Vinci without looking at the paper. Yeah. And it blew me away and I'm, I'm like, no, come on, come on, yo, why does it have to be one of the greats, do you know what I mean? And that's when it started laughing back and it went, no, put the pieces together, you know, put the pieces together and you'll see because I have 
I do have like an inventorist mind. Mm. So I always, I'm a problem solver. Mm. So that made a lot of sense. But when a, a few of us seen a psychic last year, and this psychic it blew us all away. He had me in tears because he got me nan up like straight away. And yeah, it was good, was he? Yeah, he he he, he was legit. Yes. So it, 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 I sat there and gave him nothing. I gave him nothing. I gave him so little. I had to sit there at the end for ten minutes telling them what he just got. Because uh, yeah. I, I gave him no clue. And when he got the feedback, he was blown away. But um, he he said, "Do you know that is when you do doodle?" And I went, "Yeah." I said, "I I said I do." But go on. And he went, "Finchy," and I was like, <laughs> "I was like, yo, that was enough." Because I'd seen it myself. And then this really good psychic picked it straight out, and he, yeah, didn't, even, he didn't even know I could draw. Well, well, the thing is with it, uh, John, is the fact that uh, you, you said what you said to me was uh, right tone, a uh, channel Da Vinci, and uh, this, that, and the other. And some people are blown away by my numerals at lectures, and I thought, your, oh, oh, your old oh, oh, right, okay, yeah, well, uh, you know, you know absolutely cultural, yeah, 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 yeah wall painter, yeah, absolutely. Bloody idiot! So anyway, you sent me these amazing um, drawings, and I'm gonna. What I've done is I've put them up. I'll have to edit it because we've always had technical problems on air, so I'm gonna need to edit all this. But when listeners do look at the the images for the show, they'll see what you've drawn. I mean, there's the thing you did for Wish FM. There's Castle, a man holding a fish. There's a uh, there's all kinds of images. There's a Rambo image as well, isn't there? Um, yeah, it, I, I just keep to the client. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you're an amazing artist, is the, is the thing I'm trying to get across. And I think we need to give you a round of applause, John. <laughs> Marvellous, because not only that, but you've been sat there yakking on to us for quite a long time and not even mentioned the book that you wrote um, due to all your experiences, which is like a self-help book to self oh, self-help book. Self-help, yeah, yeah. self-help book, isn't it? And what's it called, and where is it, and and, and all that? It's available on Amazon.com or .co.uk, whichever side of the, the pond you're on, mm. and it's called Why We Is God, and that's Liger Unleashed, Volume 1. Yep. So if you type Why We Is God, mm. Liger Unleashed, which is L-I-G-E-R, mm. Uh, it'll take you straight to it. And what, what made you write it? Uh, that seems a deaf question, really. But what, wow. what, what provoked what, you? What? I was sick of repeating myself, Tony. Yeah. I was I was really getting to the point where I'd be getting messages of the same of the same tone of different people, and th this was at a point where I was in a discussion with some uh, contact I had in America, and he came to the point where he, he decided he was atheist, and I was like, mate, you. you the last trap out of the rabbit hole into Wonderland is there is no God and there, there is God and you've got to find the religion. I said, you, you, you're totally missing the end door, which is Wonderland. We're all God, yeah? And um, once you go through there, the, you, you'd realise how much power you've got yourself. And he wouldn't have it. And it came to the point where we, we weren't, arguing with each other, we weren't being nasty with each other, we just decided to like part friendship. Mm -hmm. But what I said to him, and this was about three years ago now, I said I said, I'm gonna prove to you that what I'm saying's right. From my research, what the next thing is gonna happen is in May next year, it's gonna like say Obama uh, um Osama bin Laden's being killed or something and then a year later to the date they killed Obama. Yeah. Is that is that is that what you're saying? That's what I said to him. Right. So when it came to that point, yeah, I I realised that I wasn't just um, privy to what the script and the contents is. Mm. Uh, I I could actually pre guess it and mm. estimate mm. from without using any uh, instinct or psychic power. Just what I well, that must be about to happen next because that's what it looks like. But it, then, when I wrote the book, when I sat down and wrote the book, I, I had to take fifty thousand words out of it because I was saying too much. Mm -hmm. 
I was trying to like give it a basic theory of everything, mm. but like do really in depth, and I hit the wall and I couldn't finish it. So I had to do meditate again on what was wrong, and then like do go back in, take all that out for the second book, and round it up. And there, there's your book right there. So when I done that. I, I was able to get that all off my chest and stop mulling over it in the now because it, it's like right that's, a, that's what I've discovered up to now and I've documented it for others to pick up and follow off and now I can continue me learning but once you've got a um, once you've wrote a book you'll know yourself Tony it opens doors for you where that were previously closed because you, you've, actually, you've actually got something to say now yeah, it, 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 indeed. In fact, in fact, one reviewer on Amazon has put that, that we should read it before it's banned. Why do you think it would be banned, uh, John? <laughs> that would uh, that would that would make it be banned? Uh, the all the new stupid laws that they have on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Know, you can't read this. If this is. I mean, I, I see. I see us living in a, a, a oh, what could you call it? A kaleidoscopic amalgamation of George Orwell's 1984 and Aldous Huxley's A Brave New World. I think you would be right. I see all the kids and everyone else getting told to do what, what, what to do by the Playstations and Xboxes, which mm. have all got little cameras on and that. We're all, we've all got cameras in the workplace. We're all getting watched all mm. the time. Mm. And I am also beginning to see these subspecies of human pop up, like your gammas and your deltas. Which mm -hmm. anyone who's seen the film would be able to like draw that comparison. Mm -hmm. no, sorry, t tell me more. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, have you not seen the no. uh, Brave New World? Well, what what you have is um, no one gives natural birth. People are selected by genes. Who's going to be the alpha elite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when these kids are born, they're perfect, they're clever, they're good looking, they've got nice skin, they're tall. Yeah, and then they've got a beta class, which is subservient slaves, like your personal slaves, to the alpha class, and these would all be like mostly pretty women, but like, you know, that's what you're talking like as a subservient class to the, to the alpha race. And then below them, you'd have your deltas, who was your, your typical have a nice day, customer servant types, yeah? To happy to help you, and always happy. And then below that, you'd have your gammas, and your gammas were basically mindless zombies, but they, they weren't like horror, like brain zombies. They were just like, like it, socially enough, be, be targeted, misfits, mm -hmm. pressed buttons, and carried stuff around. Mm -hmm. I, I can see that playing out now. Where do you think it's all um, it's all leading to then, John? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, based on the on the experiences of your the references of your experiences with all this, where where do you think it's all it's all leading leading to? What's the end game? Do you think? Well, we're in the end game now, but the beauty of it is is it can change on a dime. Yes, it can. Not fluid. I, mm. I find the more disasters and atrocities. This, these obviously uh, mentally ill people in control make is the more people wake up. So what they're causing is an avalanche effect now where if us researchers are quick and we're on the ball and when it comes out it's a fresh topic and we can go, yeah, not only am I the first person to show you that piece of news, I'm also giving you three different investigative accounts mm. for you to decide what's true. Mm. And that's the way we all need to work. So I'd urge your listeners, uh, if you're having weird stuff happen to you, if you can see beyond the veil and if you can work out this puzzle for yourself, mm. it's time to stop researching, it's time to open your mouth and get on your feet get in front of people and start telling people about your stuff because the more you do it the more everyone else is going to do it and you, did you did you ever go through a phase then uh, john of you being embarrassed about these experiences and yeah, you yeah to, still you did, did i was still a bit apprehensive now. are you really I think about it, I just it's no i don't care i don't right. care yeah because the the, the the people who the people me mates who know me go oh no way that happened to you mm. and the the understand it because they've watched 
me go through these phases of change where they've, I've got better. Mm. Did you, and that's what it's like. You've got to move up a gear. Sometimes you may have to drop down a gear yep. to move up. Yes. But this is the um, the lessons we are being told. I mean, the best advice I can give to everyone is is if you, if you hate your life, start there, and whatever you don't like, whether it's your job or your spouse or, or where you live, whatever, address that. And when you can begin to take out these things that you absolutely hate doing, I mean, since we, we, we all have to like wash the dishes and clean the car, you know what I mean? But if, if we begin to focus on what we want and the happiness we get with it, i.e., like I said before, we change, we choose the diet. Mm. That's how we win. That's how we win this. Is there, is there any point in your um, in your experiences, John, with with the paranormal, where you've actually thought about giving it all up and chucking yeah, yourself off a bridge? Many, many a times. Really? Many, many a times. Yeah. It, because it's just got too much for you. Yeah, I think, I think I think it happens. It's for, for everyone. This I think the hardest age is twenty five. Once you get past thirty, I had what I. Some would refer to as a, a nervous breakdown in my 30th year, but I saw it as a spiritual breakthrough. Yeah, a lot of people do. How yeah. old are you now, John, as a matter of interest? I'm 30, I'll be 35 next month. Oh, and what, what is it like to have a nervous breakdown? Although I'm utterly convinced I've walked around for years with a permanent one. Uh, but but what, is it, what is it like to have one, would you describe it as? Where I was, as I just lost a really good job and got a really bad job in a recycling yeah. centre. And you go to work and people like find out that you just draw it on a piece of paper and it's like, what are you doing in here? And what are you, what are you doing? Like doing it? it's all, always like that. But then like I get into giving them knowledge and stuff. But then it came to the point where I, my conscious mind was screaming at me to walk out the door. Mm. And I, I'd already I'd been took on full time from agency and that, and you know I was doing all right. But then once that hit, is I was actually angry at myself to the mm. point where I realised that's where everything was wrong is mm. I, sh- I should not be hating myself that way mm. so I realised that yeah I've got to get out of this job and then I've got to, I've got to refocus on who I am What was your job John or can't you say? Uh, I was just, just went in a recycling factory so you're, t- you're talking like what, what washing trays and Oh, all right. Sorry, no, you, the responsible job you, and, oh, you walked away? I was, it was with DHL, I was in management, yeah. Oh, all right, right. You were in management with DHL, of all people, yes? Yeah, yeah. High, high profile leader, yeah. <laughs> it's just me, and then, and then, well, it's a similar thing to me. I had a very responsible well, job. Yeah, I got sacked over a text message. A Good joke. God. A joke text message. That's what, and that was, that was like, in, what, 2004, 2005, sort of something around, around, around then, I think. Mm. So that was like pure on on the before all this Facebook book mm. getting sacked and stuff came out. This was over a joke text message that I forwarded. Mm. Uh, yeah. What what do you what do you think in, in, in based again on on the frameworks of your of your references of experience? What what do you think is the um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is the driving agenda? I know we've discussed it earlier, but uh, uh, I'm maybe repeating. That. What then, do you think is the driving um, agenda behind all these subtle things we see in the workplace that appear to be part of business, part of management, part of efficiency, uh, which they're quite the opposite, really, aren't they? Yeah. Control. Yeah, because if they just wanted, if they just wanted the job done, they'd make robots to do. Hmm. You think about it, and if they want, if they wanted everyone to be happy. Hmm. We could all be um, working in the entertainment industry and working in films and do, doing stuff with a bit of creative edge behind it and helping people and teaching you. You were advancing the species mm. instead of pressing buttons and mm. you know, as a cashier. And I mean, yeah, to, to use if if we look at it from a servitude to others point of view, where we all help each other that little bit every day, then that. That will like change the world, but what what we're dealing with is a race of people who turn planets into wastelands. I think, you think it's that deep, do you? Mars, Tony. I think they're responsible for Mars. Really? You think it's yeah. that? You think that they're ch- ch- changing stuff into wastelands, do you? You think we've got a an intelligence out there that's doing that? What are they doing right now? The 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 making the paying people, the paying humans to 
rip all the, the, the lungs of their own planet down. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the rainforest, the amount of rainforest that disappears on a weekly basis, the size of whales, this cannot go on. And they're trying to, to synthesize nature with technology, and you're getting these fake oil trees and stuff crowning you know, the, the, the seawater is toxic. You've got fish switching in and out of sex, and the, the, the chemicals that is in everything and the pollution is this planet is going to end up as Mars. Well, it's shocking, isn't it? I, I don't know what you think, what your take on it is, John, but it's shocking these, uh, the, these, the, the fish and birds that drop out the sky. I mean, what, what, uh, two questions in this. What, what do you think it is, and do you subscribe to the point of view, second question, that it could be to do with harp? Something I, I really don't, I've not really studied, but looked at briefly. Uh, I think the best explanation for it, you've got to remember, I've, I'm, I am a sceptic, a half, and a lot of the people have laughed there after listening to this talk after <laughs> Really? You're sceptic, yeah? But yeah, I am, so that, and that's why I'll find stuff out, is because I, I will push it as far as it'll go, and mm. then it pushes back, and I go, uh-oh, and step away, and go, that's enough for me, yeah. But um, I, I think that the best excuse for animals dropping out the sky is tornadoes, hurricanes, and stuff like that. I mean, it's the, the mad stuff where it's like a frog in a land that's, dude, that frog's not uh, native to, or this is what we have to start looking at, is is it a new species? Because then if we had a new species that fell out the sky, that would indicate there's some secret uh, Noah scientist integrating new species into our earth. I think that's where you were wanting to go with that, Tony, but Yeah, no, I was just I was just interested to, to, to hear your thoughts. I know the um yeah. we, we we were looking at some research to do with India and UFOs and we came across all kinds of information uh to do to do about it from a bizarre leak that was happening quite often in the Indian press. It wasn't reported in Western press, but their their take on it was the uh, bio, uh, you know uh, UFOs coming out of the sea, you, and their magnetic fields were causing great oh, damage in the yeah. oceans. Uh, you know, uh, which isn't really the actions of an, an intelligent species. I mean, you look at UFOs, don't you? And you, uh, and this is what happens, John. And I'm sure you've been there. I know I have with my camcorder, where you film the dot of light. You know it isn't an aircraft, I know it isn't an aircraft, and it's not its not a freak of nature either. It's quite intelligent what it is. It's been around us for quite a while, and you, you, you reach that point of um, of obsession, with well, I did anyway, of obsession with with UFOs, and you were out, I was out filming them or trying to get them every night, and nothing would turn up. And, 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 and triangles and the Yeah, sky yeah, and you, you'd suddenly get this bizarre obsession. I mean, I know when I've been chased down the street now, or I was chased down the street and attacked by one. It sounds bizarre, but I was attacked by one in the farmer's field, which I'll, how, how I'll never forget. How close was that, Tony? How, how close was well, the you came into proximity with it? The one, the one in the farmer's field was about, a, was about it was hovering uh, about four to six hundred feet in the field, looking directly at me like something out of a gunfight at the OK Corral. Uh, and it was it was quite an experience, John, um, where where this thing is looking back at you. I'm sure you know what I mean. Uh, it was a dot of light. Uh, it, it would be a disc. It would be like something behind it. Fire, was yeah, it was. But it was what it, light, yes, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, it. And it you was do just, know when I've seen them myself. Yeah, exactly. And what you happens do is you know they are watching you. You do know you. Yeah. They, they, I'll also explain for you, so you know I've seen them how they move. Um, do you really just suddenly disappear? But yep. they, they haven't disappeared. It's like if you get a lazy band in between your thumb and finger and yep. just stretch it a little and yep. then let go and it's gone. Yes. And that's how they move. They do indeed, and they can be in two yep. positions at once. They can, that, which is yeah. which is the I mean uh, as uh, and once again back to this bizarre goings on of reports in India in the in their press about all this they can be in two positions at once quite intentionally uh, while doing something else at the same time and, and and from what what the Indian take of it was was that they they've been around us a long time and they've got one toe in our dimension and one foot in the um, in the other uh, yeah, dimension that's exactly right which is, which is exactly are, what's going these on these are the jinn that you talk about they are. Um, Yes. When you look back into ancient Indian history, it's none yeah. of that's being diluted. 
No. And and it reads like Star Wars. Yes. But you've been manners and, you know, yes. oh, your gods fighting in the sky yes. well, and, and these yes. weapons that are going Absolutely. off. Absolutely. And the thing with that is that their Prime Minister, Indira Gandhi, actually commented and said that India would integrate all that into their black technology. You see, people under people don't realise with India that they have a, a military-industrial complex similar to America, yes. but it's based on their ancient technologies blending with modern technologies. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and, and they don't realise it. I know the Nazis, you probably aware of this, John. The Nazis were experimenting with the Mercury engine that you saw in the Viama, uh, that they were using it in the in the bell, weren't they? In the SS Brotherhood of the Bell, where they got the big giant bell swinging with Mercury. And then you've got the... Uh, what, what was it? What's that, that that guy who developed the flo- who, who wrote the book of such such? I can't remember his name now. But, uh, but grandfather he, of the UFO is that you referring to now? No, no, he's the, he's the guy who was behind the. Um, I th- he did a book, and it was he, what he basically was. He was involved in the U.S. Air Force, and they had developed a triangle with this kind of mercury. Oh, but it could have been. I can't remember. His, I can't remember his name. I, do you know? I can't remember his name. I know Von Braun went over with Project Paperclip. Yes, he did, didn't he? Von Braun went over with Project Paperclip. But there was this other guy, and he's he's been in the Air Force, and he the TR three B or five B. It's a flying yeah, triangle. Yeah, yeah, and this technology is, of course. Herman Schultz. No, yeah, no, no, it isn't. I'll, I'll know it when I when I see it. I, I know I know who he is. But the, the thing with the thing with it is that. Um, this relates also to the Nazi technology that is coming out of the Hollow Earth and, and Antarctica, isn't it, to this day? I, yeah. I mean, I would suggest... I'd say, um, I'd say the, the, if you wanted to refer to the Hollow Earth as Agatha and call them Agathans, because I believe that's like what they're currently called. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I'd say they're getting conned. They, they are conned completely to the point where they actually think that our elite are the good guys. Where the, sorry, John, where they think what, sorry? Where they think... They, they are actually under the premise that our elite are the good guys. Yeah. That's yeah. why every time, um, like, do you look back when Fukushima went off, what happened to the descent of the North Pole? Bear in mind, you can get in the hollow air from the North Pole and the South Pole. Hmm. Who did the descent of the North Pole after Fukushima? Go, John, I'm all ears. Who did the descent? Prince Harry. With a team of seals. You've lost me. D- how does that link into? How does that link into? If we, look, like, if we look in, if we take upon, if we take into the fact that Ben Fulford came forward and said that um, the Japanese Prime Minister had been told to, to give up control of the Japanese currency to uh, oligarchical right, offshore right, okay. right, yeah. bankers. Yeah. And he's got it on film. That's what the guy said. Or they'll use the earthquake weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then Fukushima happened. Yes. Even though he, he did give them control of the finances, mm. but then all of a sudden Prince Harry's got to go to the North Pole. I don't know anything. I don't actually know anything about so that. About, about that. Done, they send um, it, it was for like war veterans who'd been injured in war or something. The charity yeah. was going to the North Pole for. Right. But you do not send a delegate to the middle of nowhere with an armed team for nothing. You reckon then, uh, you I reckon that, that there was something more to that? to go and negotiate with why they're using this style of weaponry when they were told after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you use any more of them weapons and we're going to come out and wipe you out. Right. Okay. So you, you, what, what we're talking about here is is uh, Antarctica, which is a a little bit of secret knowledge, is actually a state or a nation that is not acknowledged by the world as a state or a nation. I, 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 would we agree with that? Yeah, I was referring to the North Pole at that time. But, oh, right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you went. But Antarctica is. Yeah, yeah it's a. Uh, it's the long, like, it's the, it's the secret continent. They it's call the it, secret continent. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying, and therefore, what have I got this right? Forgive me if I got it wrong. But you're saying that Prince Harry uh, went as a negotiating team with uh, with um, SAS, whatever, to negotiate with those um, who were there. Is, is, have I got that right so far? Yeah, that's what I believe. No, that's, that's what you believe, right? That's okay. What I believe, yeah. Yeah. I, I, after after putting the, the puzzle pieces together, and believe me, it took me at least five years to even accept mm. that the world might be hollow, because mm. it is, in my eyes, the mm. hardest 
Mm. Well, you see, you see, John, they've got this big thing with Dr. Greer at the moment and his serious uh, movie yeah, project, yeah, haven't they? Classes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, what he's actually discovered is actually uh, an entity that is hollow earth and is kind of like been around for ages and those of us who probably know all this know that. Uh, I'm not too sure. I've not looked at his material. I, I don't know whether you've seen it, but, you know... It, I've only it, seen a couple of trailers of the series. Mm. I've seen some of the Amakata six-inch tall alien thing. Mm. I've seen some of that. Um, uh, uh, I don't know what your opinion on Dr. Stephen Greer is, but uh, he's very hard to read, I think. Yes, a bit um, like myself. Not sure what... Whether people would not be sure what side of the fence I'm actually on with anything, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's hard to read. Yeah, I, I, I get you. Yeah, but, but in what sense, from your point of view, do you mean is um, uh, Only because I, I've encountered so many charlatans in the trade. Yeah. And it's... Where, where do you even call it? Well, you do refer to it as a trade, because there, there is circuits and people, you know, mm-hmm. are, are in competition. For there is, there is. The, they, they all... Ignore, I don't know about you, John, but they all, they all don't touch me with a barge pole. Don't you know? No, they don't come near me. No, no, they they, they don't. Um, they don't. You know, conference organisers very rare. There's only the the mob up at St Anne's in Blackpool, New Horizons. And if anybody I could recommend New Horizons, but there's New Horizons City Talk. Um, you know, um, and the odd Truth Juice venue that 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 actually uh, like to hear me speak. But all the other mainstream UFO conferences uh, completely ignore me and don't bother. And I set the head. Oh, well, I don't need to, mate. I, I, I just don't need to. I, I'm a lone wolf. Uh, they, they call me the lone wolf. If you're Da Vinci's demon, I'm a lone wolf. Uh, you know, I just, I just, I'm doing it. I'm doing it all by myself now. I've got my own little show, as you can see, and I, I, I'm actually doing it all by myself because I can't find answers to questions. But I take the hint when I'm not wanted, uh, and I've got used to that idea. I got very upset about it at one point, but then I, uh, I got used to that idea and suddenly realised that I'm perhaps my destiny is perhaps maybe current affairs and people who next week, for example, John. Uh, we take it. We go completely um, away from UFOs, and we're covering uh, a lady who's had a, a child born with autism due to Big Pharma and uh, taking yeah. a drug. First time she's ever been on a radio program um, of any kind, I think, to discuss this. Uh, and so it's a bit of an awesome responsibility that we're talking about real life, real events, real people. But the thing is, John, from your point of view. And my point of view, these experiences that we are having, and you've certainly had our real life, aren't they? Well, yeah, I, n- nowadays I only have to go out for a drink with a, with a friend before, before uh, with, with alcohol, I don't know why, but it, it's a hell of a lot easier. Well, yes. The, the inhibitions of love, and I can, I can pick thoughts straight out of their head. And <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're extremely psychic, and I mean, you know, the guys in the remote viewing program, Joseph McMonigal, I mean, if you, if you read his autobiography, he had a reptile in it. I mean, he's, he's been awarded the Legion of Merit. What, mm. it, like someone out of airplane where the horse is stood in the kitchen and he goes to the fridge. Yeah. You know, and, and, and kind of like, um, you know, Joe McMillan is saying in his autobiography that he goes downstairs into the kitchen and there's a bloody reptilian stood there. And he just goes and does what he does and walks back again as if this is all perfectly normal. And this, this is what bloody happens. I mean, I mean, if I could describe to you, John, I know the show's about you, but, uh, you know, I could describe to me, which, which, uh, which I haven't done, but this week alone, you wouldn't believe what, the, what, what has gone on this, this week with, with this reality that you speak of, uh, yeah. in terms of myself and my own paranormal experiences. And it's like, it's comical. It's absolutely hilarious. You, you yeah. just, you just wouldn't believe it. You just wouldn't believe it. And luckily for me, I don't know about you, but I've got friends who are better, and they all say that they're better for knowing me. So that, that and, and it's good of them because they accept that I may have alternative beliefs like yourself. They call them alternative beliefs, but, but we know and I know that. We know ourselves, don't we? Yeah, we know. We, we know. Yeah, we do. We, we know. Blinking of an eye. We, we know what it's about. Where do you think you? I think you're 35 now. Where do you think you'll be when you're 40 with all this? Then do you think you'll be really, really? Do you think you'll be levitating off the living room chair? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, it'd be good, wouldn't it? Now, the, the way I see it is, um, I constantly strive for perfection, and I don't mean in you know, oh, everything's got to be perfect mm. type of way. I just mean do what I want to do, do what I love doing, do it to a point where it's a service to others and I can sustain myself from it. Yeah. And But what I've found is 
where I was refer to what we said at the start, where we've all come here to do a task. It seems the more I do for the task, for for the the mission, the core mission that we've all got, mm. the more help I get with my goals. Mm. Mm. Little bit of corporate speak there, John. Core mission. Come on now, steady. Yeah. <laughs> Little there bit of corporate go. in yeah. there, mate. Little bit of key, yeah, key corporate there. I, I like your style. Well, yeah. I'm using NLP against them. No, like, yeah, good stuff in NLP. So, in, in a typical <laughs> week, then, John, um, in the typical, in the world of O'Brien, yeah, what, um, what would happen then? Let's say during the night when you're asleep, or I mean, I've got my mate up in Saint Anne's Dex. I'm sure you know him. I love him to bits. He's eccentric as hell, but I, I just, I just think he's a not great, great guy. And he's, Nobi, yeah. yeah, and he's had, he's had extreme experiences. Um, you know, but then he tells us that he's got 10,000-foot-long uh, UFOs coming over his roof and stuff like that, which I don't believe. But yet, when you when you talk to the guy, he's had these extreme, you know, well, paranormal I, experiences. I, well, you know, during the week, what I've would... I've met there, because I've met there. Yeah. And uh, I actually saw one of his talks, and, and as, uh, the, the lady, one of the lady psychics who was with him, I asked the audience if anyone's got a message for Dex. Mm. And I told them not to go to Landers, no, in March. And... It worked out. He was due to go to Landers now in March because of this entity he was telling him wants them to go. And when he asked me why, why shouldn't I go? Because <laughs> it's going to kill you as soon as you get there. You'd have a heart attack because I could see it. And it, it, he still to this day has not gone to Landers now. And it keeps You're asking him. Can great. you ask that? I will ask him. He's going to be a guest on the show because he's very interesting to speak to. Once you, once you, it's like peeling the layers of an onion with Dex. You know, once you start peeling, he's a very interesting guy to uh, to to talk to, uh, and he, he's certainly been through, you know, been through the mill. But he doesn't dream, John. He doesn't oh, I dream. Do. I you have, do. I, so. I have infiltrated others' dreams. Yeah, Inception. Uh, I don't know if we can call it that way. It's um, to that level where you, you go into like the years in the dream. And mm. I, I'm on a boat. I'll pop up in someone's dream and do something, and then the next day they'll go. I dreamt about you last night, and I go to do this, and they'll go. How are you doing that? Yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> and, and then there's the b the bizarre scenario, John. I don't know whether you've uh, whether you've had this, but there is this bizarre scenario of missing time while in a dream state and being put back again. I don't know whether you've ever had that scenario happen where you're dreaming and the dream is happening in like real time, and it, it and it is as if you are then extracted out of the dream. And then you put back again as if you've had missing time in the dream or you've gone elsewhere and you've no idea where you've gone. It's the well, most well, bizarre that, experience. That's the first I've heard of, of anyone saying anything like that, Tony. Um, that's like you get abducted in your dream. Yes. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you, Yes, it is. It's an abduction scenario that's going on in the dream. Because I believe, John, I don't know what you think, but I, I actually believe that this that we're looking at two levels of artificial reality here. We're looking at a human spiritual consciousness and we're looking at their consciousness yeah. and dream state and dream world and some of us who are sensitive enough and i'm sure the guys who did all the remote viewing stuff in the u.s and the russians who, who did the psychic stuff would probably concur with that, that that there is some kind of different reality and consciousness that's like a dream state but is alien uh it's very advanced and i, I know i'm waffling slightly here but i know the canadian ufologist wilbert smith was approached by uh, i think his own country's secret services or whatever because they said to him that you'd, he'd sussed out the UFO mechanical um, situation, but there was a mental component to it, you know, which yeah. was fascinating. Yeah, it, it is bizarre. Which bizarre. I think you, you, you've definitely uh, discovered. There's so much we could go on for three hours, but this is all we've got time for, John, and I, I do apologise for the technical, uh, technical stuff that was going on. Give you a round of applause. <laughs> And you can find John O'Brien's book on Amazon. What's the yeah. title again, John? Why We Is God, Liger Unleashed, Volume 1. And it's a steal at one ninety nine. Looks to be a brilliant read. I'm going to go and download it myself. Do I get a discount, John? Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's two quid back when I see you. God. Oh, cheers, mate. Thanks a lot, Mal. Lovely to have you on, matey. A sincere apologies to the listeners for all the technical stuff that went on. Uh, we've got to get it right. This is uh, It was feedback and all sorts happening. I just couldn't understand. But thank you for being on the programme, matey. It was both a pleasure and a joy, Tony. Thank you. Cheers, matey. Bye-bye, mate.
And back next week, the Tony Topping Show is back next week, and it's going to be quite a good one. Current affairs next week. Catch you later, all.